And we're turning, please, to the book of Joshua. And we're in Joshua tonight. And we're in chapter 24. The book of Joshua. In the Old Testament. Joshua 24, please. My text this evening carries with it a great deal of weight. And it's a text this morning, this evening, that stands out as a great signal. A great signal of great force. Because tonight, unsafe friend, it's a text that stands between you and stands between God. Stands between you and God. And this text this evening stands out as a great signal, a signal of great force, because it not only stands out this evening between you and God, it stands out tonight between you and eternity. That's a solemn thought tonight. Because you one day will face God. And you one day will face eternity. But tonight, you are already facing God. My text tonight is bringing you face to face with God. You know, friends, this evening, as I have already said, it carries a great deal of weight. Because this evening, this text, will decide heaven or hell for you. Not so solemn thought this evening. This text will decide heaven or hell for you. It's to do with a choice tonight. And before you leave this tabernacle, you're going to make a choice. Because my text tonight is going to force you into this choice. This choice that will determine where you will spend eternity. Because you see, as far as this choice is concerned tonight, neutral you cannot be. Because tonight, before you leave, you're going to have made your choice. My text this evening is found in Joshua chapter 24. And it's down there at verse 15. Now listen to my text, please as I read it slowly for you. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, 
whether the gods of your, which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the god of, gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that text tonight is calling upon you, dear unsaved sinner friend, to make a choice. as to where you will spend eternity. It's a choice tonight that will determine where you will be in a hundred years from now. I'll tell you, from 24 hours from now. Because the first thing I want you to notice, there's a choice in this text. And I want you to notice it's a personal choice because the first two words of my text is this evening, choose you. And that's the choice to me. It's a personal choice, dear unsaved friend, because I can't make this choice for you. As Joshua couldn't make it for the people who he was addressing, dear unsafe friend, I cannot choose for you. It's a choice that you're going to have to make yourself. Choose you. Maybe you're here this evening and you have a saved mother. Maybe she's in heaven. Maybe you had a saved father and he's in heaven. But your saved mother or your saved father cannot make that choice for you. Choose you, the text says. Because when it comes to this choice, dear unsaved friend, it's between you and God, nobody else. It's between you and God. What will your choice be tonight? How will you choose? Choose your will. Did you notice how Joshua introduced the text? He says there, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord. Do you know he was addressing people who thought it evil to serve the Lord? Do you know, friends, there was a time in my life I thought it was foolish. Getting saved. Actually, who would want that nonsense? Derek Lone used to tell me time and time again, I needed to repent of my sin. Time and time again, he tried to tell me that Christ died for my sins. Time and time again, he told me I needed to be saved. And I thought he was an idiot. Thought he was a clown. Tell me about getting saved. I remember one 12th of July, it was 1984. It was not on a cloud that year, and the Connie Baptist Church were holding an open air outside the Church of Iron and Gates. And we were just lads at the time. You know, when you're lads, you thought you're a big man on the 12th of July. And, and here they were, Stanton preaching and Stanton singing. Thomas Oliver was there singing with a guitar. And it's only quite recently I learned one of the preachers was John Taylor. And I remember that 12th of July well, there was me and a number of other fellas in bond uniform. And when you, when you had a bond uniform on, you'd give you a wee bit of authority, didn't it? And we used to walk past them shouting, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, it was foolishness what them boys were telling me to do. 
And you know, maybe this evening, friend, you think I'm foolish. You think this salvation business, it's nonsense. Maybe you think this whole business about turning to the Lord is a pile of codology. Oh, you know, friend, this evening, maybe that's you tonight. You think this is all foolish. It's mental. Only nut nutters talk like this. That's the way I used to believe. But I'll tell you, friends, in the following year, 1985, the last Saturday was held in Clocher. And the date was the 31st of August. And guess who was there holding open airs that day? Naconi Baptist Church. And who was standing that day handing out tracts for them? Me. Who was there standing singing along these choruses? Me. The one who mocked them. The one who laughed at them. The one who jeered at them. Because I'll tell you, friend, I changed my thoughts and I changed my way of thinking. Because in the August of 1985, I was faced with the same choice that you've been faced with tonight. Do you know what Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19 says? I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life. There's the choice in the text. I want you to look into that text again because there's a calendar in that text. I. There's a calendar there. And God tonight is pointing you to the calendar. And will you listen to what God is saying? Choose you this day. When it comes to the matter of getting saved, sir, When it comes to the matter of preparing to meet God, listen, God will never point you to next month. When it comes to your soul salvation of God, will never point you to next week. And when it comes tonight to the matter of your soul, God doesn't even point you till tomorrow. God puts his finger firmly on the calendar and say, this day. Do you know why that is? The only time you're guaranteed is now. That's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 3, verse 2, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation because we're not to boast ourselves of tomorrow. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. Why? Because thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. You think this, this evening, you think of those wee lads there of 17 years of age getting up the other morning. Two wee lads. Jump out of bed, maybe. Maybe get into the shower. It's like every other morning. Roll up their pajamas, throw them into the hot press, Get down and swallow a wee bit of breakfast. Mommy, Daddy, that's me away now. We'll see you this evening. We'll see you this evening. And they head off in the car to Portadown College. 17 years, not 80 years, 17 years of age, both of them ushered out into eternity. That's why God 
points the finger on the calendar and says, choose you this day. You meet and see tomorrow, sir. You meet and see tomorrow, dear. And you need to get it right tonight. I remember this, this day, 23 years ago to the very day, it was a Lord's Day too. You check your calendar, 24th of January, 93, was a, was a Sunday. That morning there was two phone calls come to our house. One was from Tracy's friend, you called her Sandra McNeil. I answered the call and Sandra says, did you hear the news? I says, no. Says it's Gordy and Barbara. He says, Gordy and Barbara's our friends. Did you hear the news that Barbara's expecting? He says, No, it didn't. Yeah, this is their first child. And that wee first child that they were expecting was our soloist this evening. 23 years ago, to this very day, Anna, I heard you were on the way. set the phone down. I knew I, I, I shouldn't go up and tell Tracy because she was in night duty and she was sleeping. But the phone rung again and I thought it was Sandra had a mistake, made a mistake. But this phone call was going to be different because my father was on the other side. He says, George, we've just got some bad news. I says, what is it, Daddy? He says, your Uncle James has passed away. Oh, not Uncle James. Yes. You see, he was my favorite uncle. He was a character. 23 years ago this morning at half ten, heart attack. At 25 past two that day, half two, I was helping Fred Martin, who was our local undertaker. We had him dressed, and uh, uh, we were helping him to put him off the bed and put him into the coffin and put the shroud over him. And here's a man who was right as rain on a Saturday night. 68 years of age. And here I was 23 years ago this day, helping the undertaker to put him into the coffin. And that's why, dear unsaved friend, God puts the finger on the calendar and says this day. Because as far as tomorrow is concerned, you may never see its light. Choose you this day. Ah, but here's the call from the text. Whom ye will serve. Here's the call. You either come to the Lord Jesus in repentance of your sin, give your life to Him, and be saved and receive the gift of eternal life, or choose to allow the devil to hold on to you who will damn your soul in hell. Choose you this day whom ye will serve. I want to speak to you a wee moment about the Lord Jesus. I want to tell you, friends, this evening how he came so far from glory. I want to tell you tonight how he left the ivory palaces of glory of heaven. I want to tell you this evening how he was born into this world as the wee babe of Bethlehem. I want to tell you tonight how he lived a sinless life, how he went about doing good, how he, went to how he went about performing the miracles, healing the sick, raising the dead, calming the storms, 
But I want to tell you tonight about him who went to a place which is called Calvary. And to tell you tonight about him who was crucified there on that old rugged cross. And to tell you of him who loved you. I want you to get that tonight. The Lord Jesus, he loved you. Loved you so much that instead of fighting against the soldiers that nailed him to the cross, he gave himself to the soldiers who made himself of no reputation. I want to tell you of him this evening who was stripped naked, who was lifted up on that old rugged cross. I want to tell you of him Tonight the one who, was, who knew no sin yet was made sin for us. And I want you to, to tell you of him tonight. Who on that old rugged blood-stained cross suffered the just for you the unjust that he might bring us to God. I want to tell you of him this evening who God did not spare but allowed him to suffer and allowed him to bleed and allowed him to die for you and for me and for your sin and me. And you're sitting in this meeting tonight and I'm not going to preach any old tripe of religion. I preach to you tonight Christ as the only Savior of sinners. And I want to tell you of him tonight the one who died there on Calvary's cross as the once and for all sacrifice for sin. Because on that cross he died for you, friend. He died for Catholics as well as Protestants. He died for the poor as well as for the rich. Christ died for all mankind. And Jesus died for you. Friend, does it not touch your heart to know that the Son of God loved you and gave himself for you? I'll tell you something else about him tonight. He didn't stay dead because beyond the cross tonight, there's an empty tomb. And beyond the cross, there's a risen Savior. And I'll tell you something else about him this evening. He's in this very meeting in the power of his Holy Spirit. The call. Choose you this day whom ye will serve. And on down to that little verse, verse, we come to the conclusion of the text. Because here's the conclusion. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You know, friend, tonight you have a choice between two. You have a choice between Christ and the devil. And tonight you're in the hand of the devil. That's where you are. But if you choose Christ tonight, he'll set you free. He'll save your soul. He'll give you the gift of eternal life. He'll give you the wonderful joy of knowing sins forgiven. He'll give you everything that you long for. Do you know what's wrong with you, unsaved person? You're looking for the right thing. But you're looking in the wrong place. It's the Lord Jesus tonight that satisfies. It's the Lord Jesus tonight who makes you whole. Will you not say tonight, just as I am, thou wilt receive. Wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve, because thy promise I believe. O Lamb of God, I come. I am coming, Lord, coming now to thee. Wash me, cleanse me in the blood that flowed on Calvary. Friend, here's the deal. Choose you 
this day. Whom ye will serve. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. And you're going to walk out through those doors at the back there. What will your choice be? Never you mean anybody else. What will your choice be? Choose you this day. Let's all pray. My friend, tonight if God has been speaking to you, come and have a wee word with us. Where you're a servant for Christ. Nobody knows what tomorrow's going to bring for any of us. And tonight, God has put the challenge to you. Choose you this day. Will you do it tonight? You will do something. So choose well. And so, Lord, concerning the eternal issues of this meeting, we leave them with thee in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen.